Keegan, going to be really, really happy with that. Ryan's throwing some good stuff against you there in all three sets, and you've won them all. Yeah, um, Ryan played absolutely phenomenal. Even in that last six starts, I thought, oh, no, this is going T1, and what's going to happen? And then 85 came up, two darts. <laughs> what's it mean for you to play so well in your opening game this year's World Championship? Uh, it means the world. Like, this year has been horrific for everyone. You know, being the lab assistant back on the ROI, maybe I've not practised as much, maybe I've not played as much darts, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And, yeah, speechless. Absolutely speechless. Well, how do you feel about your game coming into this year's tournament, then? Because by your own admission, it's not been the greatest. Of no, you no, definitely not. I think, like, between, like, March to June... Picked up the darts eight times before the summer series. Somehow qualified for the match play. Played alright the match play. Bit unlucky. Got to the autumn series, winter series, and I thought, oh, it's world championship. Just play well. That's all you need to do is just play well. And yeah, I've not practiced as much, and I'm just really, really glad to get through. Presumably, this last sort of few weeks, or, or certainly over this Christmas period, though. You're hammering the dartboard. Is there is a way of getting back at... Oh, no, maybe not then. Mm. Well, I am with them a lot. It's, it's, you know, like I said before, I've, I've said it on Instagram, I've said it on Twitter. The last eight months, my darts are on the side. And this is number one. That's it. And admirable as that is, putting the NHS and your job and all this, you know, great, incredible work first... There's a William O World Championship to be to be won here, and this might be the most open one in history. Certainly, the most open one you've played in. I mean, this is a massive opportunity. Really. Definitely, you know, at the beginning of the year, first of January, two thousand and twenty, someone said to me, "You want a white night? You want to deal with COVID specimens? This is going to be a pandemic." I laughed, but when I did get to half past three in the morning on the NHS at the Isle of, at St Mary's Hospital in the Isle of Wight. And I had a positive COVID specimen in my hand, darts become as easier. And that's it. Really? So do you actually, can you actually go up there and play with less pressure? Now? 100%. Play that's 100%. Better. I literally had the most powerful... I've, got, I've had the most powerful thing in my right palm, as we speak, in the world. And that's it. That's, that's no... You know, coronavirus, if you believe it, if you don't believe it, it's stopping the world. And I, I've had it, not once, not twice, probably 120, 200 times in my hand. Darts will never, ever be that much pressure in my life. Are you going to be here all the way through Christmas? What, so do you know if you can go home yet? Well, <laughs> the Isle of Wight is tier one. So we're very, we are very fortunate on the Isle of Wight. But no, you know, I'm here until the 23rd. I'm here to play darts. I'm here to relax. The first game, Brian played absolutely phenomenal. He played better than what I thought he was going to do. And he deserved more than 3-0, put it that way. But I'm here to play Chizzy next round. Bring it on. Great stuff. Well played tonight. Thank you. Keen, okay, what are you talking about there and the work you do is obviously amazing. With the news that's broke today, is there a danger that you could get called back to work and maybe have to duck out of games or duck out of your next round if it got really bad? Yeah, to be fair, there's only literally, there's a very, very small group of people of what we do on the Isle of Wight, because we're not a big population, we're the size of London, but we're about, you know, divided by 75, that's the Isle of Wight, but I'm here to play darts. This week, I'm here to play darts, I'm just relaxed, that's it. But if you got the call, would you? 100%, 100%. There's, the thing is, I've... I've never been a selfish person. I've always put people in front of me and, you know, if they turn around to me and said, right, you're against, you know, you're in the quarterfinals, the last 16, the last 32, last two, we need help. I'll do it. You know, I'll, wear the, I'll wear the badge of pride. Talking about your, your year and everything like that, we can go back a year. Is it important to you to get back on that stage after the Asada game? Because I know that hurt, didn't it? Because it's a game oh, you thought you should have won. Oh, 100%. And... I think, like, Asada, when I was, what, teen or up, 
I, I think I, I had 89 and I missed it with two darts. But that year, I just didn't feel confident. Even though I played really, really well throughout the year, it just wasn't there. And, you know, to be fair to Asada, he beat me. And, it, you know, the, last, the first three, maybe the first four months of that year, it just shows you there's bigger things to worry about in life. And there really is. You know, life is... You know, life is really precious and you take each day as it is and if you're healthy, you breathe in oxygen, that's it. That's all you need to worry about. Keen, pleasure as always, mate. Thank you very much. Keen, just for people that don't know, can you just explain what you do for the NHS? Yeah, so I am a, a medical laboratory assistant, as what you call as an MLA. Um, I work, I've worked at St Mary's Hospital in the Isle of Wight since 2011, literally four months since I left college um, and yeah it's, I've, I've liked, I liked science uh, it's you know you help people without seeing the people if that makes sense you know you see the same people coming in week in week out for treatment blood transfusions everything but it's the fact that you never see them but you know for a fact that you are helping them um, this year several times it's been a struggle. I absolutely love my job to bits. I've put my, like I said, put my darts down for like eight weeks, didn't pick them up. I was horrific in the home tour, horrific in the summer tour, horrific forever, you know, throughout the end of the year. But, you know, I've always put number one second. And I'm just so glad that, you know, I went up there, wore the badge of pride, and I won. That's it. I think a lot of the top players have a lot of pressure on their shoulders because this. That is the sole income. Definitely. Is, is darts a bit of a, a bit of a release? Oh, to be fair, that it's a game of darts at the end of the day. You know, I'm I'm the only one out of the 128 that deals with this phenomenal, with the virus, whatever you want to call it. I deal with it every day. And <laughs> there's no pressure. There's more pressure at half past three in the morning make sure everything is done properly and then me cock it up and then spreading it throughout the world, throughout the lab and then nobody can come to work. That's how serious it is. And today, I'm just fortunate that I won. It's a game of darts. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.